oh man, oh man, is right. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Ace Fangirl. I totally just messed up my intro and welcome back to another episode of Aviary Attorney. Last time we did the trial in the catacombs and we did it right. We got Severin off the hook. We took him out of here and Boma shot, uh, what's his face? Not the priest, the other one. Romulus? The bad boy. She shot him. It was great. Um, and she let Remus live. He ran away. But I assume we are picking up when we have escaped with Coco Rico. Uh, which we basically dragged him out of the catacombs and here we are, back at our office. You kicked so much derriere at that impromptu trial yesterday. Those rebels were all like, We're executed as punk, mob justice, rah rah rah, but you were all like, this isn't how we do things in France, chicken pluckers. And then they were all like, Sparrowson, let's get serious for a moment. Serious? You just pulled off the craziest lawyering move in the history of French law. We should be celebrating. We don't have time to pull out the champagne. Aw, there's always time to pull out the champagne. Come on. Didn't you see the anger in the rebel's eyes? Didn't you feel the tension in the air? We're just days away from violence breaking out onto the streets. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I guess another revolution might be around the corner. But what exactly can we do? We've already told the police everything we know. Unless... You're not thinking of arming yourself to the teeth and fighting the rebel forces yourself, are you? What? No, you watch far too many action operas. Action operas. I was thinking of preparing a legal case. A case? For whom? At their core, all historical revolutions center on trials. A nation's rulers are tried and held accountable for their crimes. But you saw the horrendous trial that took place last night. Nobody cares about due process when emotions are running high. Regardless of the outcome of the revolution, we need to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity for justice. That makes sense. So what's the plan? We head to Connell's Tavern and hand out some business cards? Think bigger. Who will the rebels target? The... King? Exactly. To the Palais Royale! We're just gonna go! Act 4B. Egalité. Egalité? Egalité. Falcon and Sparrowson rush to the Palais Royale to arrange a private audience with the king. After filling in a pile of forms, the two are led to a waiting area. Oh, it's our friend! Our, our duck friend! Are you here to see the king? That's right. Okay, take a number and wait to be called. Take... a number? Yep, just wait your turn. Wow, it's that easy? More fools have come to see the king. Let me guess. Lawyers. That's right, how did you... Hey, I know you! You're the Prime Minister! Monsieur Guizot! Guiz... Guizot? Guizot? Oh wow, you're right, Sparrowson. It's an honor to meet you, Prime Minister. Spare the formalities. You two are here to offer the king legal aid, aren't you? Yep, we're gonna offer him assistance for the upcoming rebellion. Let me give you a word of advice. Don't bother. Excuse me? The king doesn't take kindly to any form of criticism. He buries his head so far in the sand that one could swear he's an ostrich. One would think that seven assassination attempts would be enough for a man to learn that he is detested. With all due respect, Prime Minister, I think the king of France is mature enough to not let his ego get in the way of senses. So one would think. 24. That's us. It was a pleasure meeting you, monsieur. Good luck. You'll need it. Alright, let's see how this goes. This is going to be awkward. 24, calling number 24. Oh, look at him rocking. Oh, he's so cute. I love him. Good day, your majesty. Good day, messieurs. Oh, he's so fat. Look at him. Can I help you with something? Oh, I probably should have prepared a speech beforehand. That would have been smart, huh? Just wing it. Right, let's see. How to start. Uh, listen up! Uh, your majesty. We need to be respectful. Your majesty, what I'm about to say is of the utmost importance. Please listen closely. Okay, I'm listening. Uh, <laughs> Merit's about to go down. <laughs> No, we need to be- we need to be professional here. We can't just say shit's gonna go down. There was this- we can't be like over dramatic. Like he's not gonna like- we actually might like that. We saw him at the trial. He was like all about it. 
Um, let's just say there's a storm. There's a storm coming. Rebels are plotting your downfall, and many believe that a serious uprising is imminent. Imminent, you say? Goodness. We can help for a price, no. Uh, we humbly offer our aid. We are sure that such a pitiful revolt will blow over in no time at all. Nonetheless, we would like to humbly offer our aid as lawyers. We may be of great use to the throne in this troublesome time. Uh-oh. Why did it go quiet? Hmm. I think I understand. You do? I understand that you are a pair of con artists attempting to screw a self-made bourgeois out of his hard-earned cash. You have some nerve to even imply that my people hate me. I am the Citizen King. I am beloved by all. You're not, though. Beloved kings tend to experience fewer assassination attempts. Beck, have these two crooks thrown in jail. Maybe that will teach them a thing or two about respect. Right away, your majesty. You can't be serious. Aw, oh, man, now we're in jail. We should have said shit's about to go down. Oh, he was serious. Well, this is another fine mess you've gotten me into. There's no need for the attitude, Sparrow, so we won't be in here for long. Once we receive a court hearing, the judges will no doubt dismiss our charges instantly. And how long will it take for us to get a court hearing? The- oh my god, I didn't read that whole sentence. I was distracted and upset that we're in jail. Um, a week or so, I'm guessing. Hmm, I can see why that might be a problem. The revolution could be in full swing by then. What to do, what to do. We could try escaping. Don't be ridiculous, nobody's ever escaped from the conciergerie before. Ah, but nobody's ever locked the genius Sparrows and his, and his witty lackey Falcon into the same jail cell before. It's an absurd suggestion that you are my boss. Got any better ideas? No. Okay, let's break out of prison. <laughs> Fantastic! Select an area to examine. Okay, let's... well, what's this? A fireplace. It's been bricked up, so escaping up the chimney isn't an option. Okay. This. A ledge! Give me a leg up and I can grab on and chimney my way over somewhere. Let's be honest, Sparrowson. Neither of us have the physical prowess to shimmy anywhere. Aw. A door? There's a bit of a, there's a bit of scrap metal in this hole. I think it broke off an iron shackle. We can dig through the stone walls with this. See? It's all scratchy. That may actually work. If we had a decade or two. So that's a maybe on the stone digging scheme. Well, I'll keep it in mind in case the king decides to go all Count of Monte Cristo on us. Good reference. I enjoy that. What about this? What is this? Look, Falcon, a loose brick. We can wait for a guard to transfer us to someplace, sneak up behind him, and then- and then- And then we get a death sentence. For murder. I think not. Let's search a little harder. There's a little dent here. One of us could hide. Hide? What would that accomplish? Well, the guard would eventually come in and be like, where's the other prisoner? And then we use the momentary confusion to push him over and escape. Do you really think an experienced guard would be confused by a prisoner hiding in a little hole in the wall? We can do better. Uh, can we though? Cause I am not seeing anything else to look at. I guess we can't. I give up. So soon? Yes, trying to escape from a notoriously inescapable prison wasn't the smartest plan we've ever devised. Well, well, well. That voice. That condescending tone. What's up, my boy? You owe me one, okay? Get me out of jail. Just what are you two bird brains doing? It is so good to see you alive and kicking, my dude. And hear your music again, which is bopping. Severin, are you alright? Yes, yes, I'm fine. The injuries I sustained were mostly superficial. The doctor advised me not to do anything strenuous anytime soon, but he gave the all clear for returning to my job. So tell me, why did I get a memo informing me that JJ Falcon and Sparrowson were being held in the conciergerie for treason? It's all Falcon's fault. Naturally. I figured that if a revolution is inevitable, then we should do our best to ensure the uprising proceeds in an organized manner. The less bloodshed, the better. Okay, so what did you do? We offered the king our assistance. We said that we would defend him in court if and when such a need arises. Well, we didn't quite use those words. This isn't the first time the king has had someone imprisoned for something so pointless. What a pig-headed fool. Consider your charges dropped. 
All right, let's get out of here. Hold on. You've caught my interest with this idea of yours. A bloodless revolution. You are absolutely right in that if the king is captured, the citizens will devolve into an unruly mob of animals. We should prepare for a formal trial. No, we should preempt it. We? You're going to help us. Of course, this isn't a task that being handled by two birds alone. What do you mean by preempt, Severin? We go on the offensive. We charge the king with crimes against the French people before the rebels can even act. We can do that? We can certainly try. I'll start building a case against the king. My argument would be focused on the king's gluttonous and irreverent fiscal policies. His lack of commitment to his socio-political promises. His overall ineptitude and irresponsibility on all facets of his duties as a monarchical ruler. Monarchical, that's a word. And obviously his denial of universal suffrage. Obviously. This person had no idea what any of that meant. How am I supposed to defend the king from all of that? You can't. If you try and argue with logic and facts, this hypothetical trial will inevitably result in a landside guilty verdict. So I suggest you take a different approach. Appeal to the king's character. Try to win people's hearts with tales of the beloved Citizen King. He hasn't been called the Citizen King for like 10 years. It was just a suggestion. But consider this. You don't need to win this case. You just need to make a strong enough argument that the trial is fair. All that remains is ensuring the king can be peacefully brought to the courthouse when the protests start to turn violent. That's a job for the police and royal guard. I'll inform Inspector Volerty of our plan so that he can prepare accordingly. At least I would, if I could find him. I told you he's suspicious! Inspector Volerty is missing? Apparently. He's taken an informal leave of absence since Wednesday. Hold on, Falcon. One thing eludes me. As you probably figured, Inspector Volerty had me perform an investigation into your past. He thought you were the Viridian Killer, crazy as it sounds. And, well, I'm sorry for doing that. It was quite invasive of me, but I can't help but wonder. Why did you change your name around 1830? Because... I was ashamed, I suppose. Are we gonna get the dirt? Are we gonna get the tea? Come on, tell me. I had a family name to live up to. My grandfather was something of a successful lawyer. So when I turned up to my classes at law school, people would gawp at me. They would say, wow, you have big shoes to fill and your grandfather would be proud. But I was a terrible law student. Mediocre at best. I knew that deep down, I would never be half the man that my grandfather was. Fascinating. I had no idea. Who was your grandfather, if you don't mind me asking, Falcon? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it was just another overly opinionated rebel who died in the old revolution. What? No, tell me! I see. Well, it's not dilly-dally any longer. We have duties to carry out. Right. We're gonna find anecdotes, and we're gonna defend the king whether he likes it or not. Well, I don't know. I want to know now. I, w I want to know who his grandfather was. Do you think we know him? I wonder. I don't know. Probably not, but like, maybe he'll come up in this case. That'd be pretty cool. All right. Where are we going to start? We got a lot of places to go. How many, how many days do we have? I don't even know. Like, I mean, let's just start from the top, I guess. See what happens. Time for some shopping, Falcon? Maybe later. For now, we need to find people who've spoken to the king. He's been known to pass through Lahal on occasion, so if we're lucky... Hello! Hey, messieurs, it's us, remember? We remember. Are you keeping well, madame? Absolutely, never been better. So, what can I sell you today? Information. We're looking for positive stories about the king. I don't suppose that you have any? The king? No, I haven't got nothing to say about the king. The king's a... a... Smelly egg thief! Quiet, child. You know what they say about the king having spies everywhere. <laughs> spies? Calm down, Sparrowson. The rumors of the king having an elaborate spy network are patently untrue. Then how do you explain the shutdown banquets, huh? The government's clamping down on anyone who dissents, you know. Let's get this conversation back on track. Joey, can you tell us why the king is a smelly egg thief? My name's not Joey. It's nothing you need to concern yourselves with, messieurs. No, please go on. We need to know. Please go on, madame. Don't worry, we aren't spies. At least, I don't think we are. I know. I trust you guys. See, a couple of years ago, we were running a shop. An antiques and odds and ends shop. And, and, we had an egg. 
It was this golden egg, super precious. We must have bought that thing for 200 francs, but it was easily worth 10 times that. We were pining on- pining? Pining on making a nice tidy sum from it. I see, an investment egg. So what happened? Well, one day, we were visited by the king, no less. An old king- an old king Lufil. <laughs> Lufil. I love that. Shows an interest in our egg. So we were thinking this would be our chance to make bank, right? But then the geezer just goes and waddles off with it. Without paying you. Oh yeah, he paid us all right. What's this? The coin of one of the king's- the coin one of the king's guards slipped our way. It isn't even French, it says Britain on it. I think this is British. One of those crazy imperial unit coins from a crazy imperial country. I have no idea what the British-French exchange rate is, but we, can we buy this off you, madame? Put your wallet away and keep it. It's worthless to me. So Tan's coin has been added to evidence. Losing that egg bankrupted us. It put us out on the streets. But now we bounce back. Sultan and Gambad, better than ever. That's excellent to hear. Anyway, we must take our leave. You've been a huge help, madame. We're going to go kick that king's butt and get your egg back. Hold on, we're supposed to be the defense. Ah, oh, man, I don't think that's gonna actually uh, work out, so... All right, let's do one more day and then we'll end it off. How about that? Let's go to the Pont des Arts, see if our kingfisher friend is there. We can talk to him. There he is! I knew he'd be here. Monsieur Kingley, we need your help. Finally, it's about time someone around here appreciated my skills. Your fishing skills, right? Sparrowson, please do not provoke the potential witness. The term is angling, wise guy. This has nothing to do with fishing. Let me cut the preamble. We're looking for people who have positive stories about the king. Would you happen to have any? Stories, huh? You came to the right guy. I have a whale of a story for you. So the other day, I was fishing. I caught this monster of a catfish. It was two meters long. Easily. Here we go. I caught a fish and it was this big. Oh, sure. I drag a 90 kilogram falcon out of the water and everyone buys it. But I claim to catch one big fish and suddenly everyone's a skeptic. Please continue your story, Mr. Kingley. Oh, right. So anyway, the king of all people happens to be walking by with his entourage. And they all clapped and cheered and came over to see the fish. And then the king says, I'm hungry, let's cook this fellow up. And then he just walks off with my fish. Can you believe that? Uh, uh, no, I can't. Nope, there's no way you caught a two meter catfish in the Seine. What, the Seine, that's how you pronounce that word. What bait were you using? That's not what I meant. Hagelschlock branded chocolate swirls. You mean the thing that I gave you, or, well, like, I could have given you, but didn't, but could have? Okay, that would do it. Did you at least get paid for your fish? Oh, yes, one of the royal guards was nice enough to flip one franc my way. One franc, he may as well have just flipped the bird. No offense. I like that, that's funny. Aha! So the king supports the local fishing industry! I'm writing this down. What? Sparrowson, that's not... I have no idea if the store will be of any use to us, but we appreciate your time, monsieur. Good day to you. Bye, monsieur fisherman! Hey, don't call me a fisherman! Oh my god, this is gonna be a- This is gonna be, like, a terrible, terrible thing. Trying to get all these stories. Let's- Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more, and then we'll finish off with the next three. In- in the next video. How about that? Let's go see our good friend Nathan. Maybe Nathan will have something good for us. Okay, here we go. Nathan never lets us down for useful information. I'm sure he's got something interesting and pleasant to say about the king. Oh, it's you, messieurs. Perhaps you'll surprise me today and actually ask to take out a book. Nope, just the usual today, an endless stream of questions. You two need an encyclopedia. Well, go on then, ask whatever drivel you want to ask. Is the king a good leader? From your well-educated standpoint, is King Philippe a good leader, as far as leaders go? Well, I can't fault the king's pro-business spirit. The big industry leaders love him. Oh, this sounds promising. Of course, this comes at the expense of everyone who isn't a bourgeois. The wealth divide is stronger than ever. Maybe not. You can forget about socially progressive politics. The king signs off on all of Guzot's backward-thinking policies. Oh, that said pol- they both said policies, my bad. And of course, in terms of leadership and charisma, the king is about as personable as a rotten pear. That'll do, monsieur. A simple no would have sufficed. Have you ever met him? Have you ever met King Louis-Philippe? I have. As a matter of fact, he occasionally drops by this library to check out books. Unlike some people. 
What sort of books does he check out, monsieur? Thick books. I believe the last one he checked out was An Expansive History of the Macedonian Empire. I had no idea that his majesty was interested in academic history. I'll make a note. King Louis- King Louis? What? King Louis Philippe is a well-read and intelligent man. It must be said that the books are usually returned with footprints on the covers. This leads me to believe that the king may just use them to stand on during speeches. Oh. We'll just leave that part out. Huh, okay. Is there anything else? No, that's all. That'll be all. Thank you for your time and patience, monsieur. Huh. I look forward to your next round of idiotic questions. Oh, is he gonna give me something snarky? Snark? I really do. Does he really? Oh, he does like us. I knew it. He just likes someone coming to talk to him, probably. Monday. Well, we got three places left to go, which seems like a good place to leave off for next time. We've got the Palais de Justice, the Canard Joyeux, which is going to be a tail and a half, especially if our good friends Piero and Fontaine are there, and uh, R&M. Uh, maybe Renard will have something for us. Hopefully. We'll find out next time. I'll see you then.